Hugh Hefner, founder of Playboy magazine, says this. I quote from him in my book. This is my book called The Love That Satisfies. Listen to this. He says, I started Playboy magazine as a personal response to the hurt and hypocrisy of our Puritan heritage. He goes on to say, our family was Puritan in a very real sense. Never hugged. Oh, no. There was absolutely no hugging or kissing in my family, Hugh Hefner says. There was a point in time when my mother, later in life, apologized to me for not being able to show affection. That was, of course, the way I had been raised. So I said, Mom, because of the things you weren't able to do, it set me on a course that changed my life and the whole world. When I talk about the hurt and hypocrisy in some of our values, our sexual values, it comes, Hugh Hefner says, from the fact that I didn't get hugged a lot as a kid. When I first read this, I wanted to weep for this man. This man is just starved for love like we all are. And when the banquet is not presented to us, we inevitably start eating out of the dumpster. And Hugh Hefner has been feeding our hunger with his dumpster now for how many years? Since the early 1950s. Let me, let me give you a visual here so we understand what we're up to in this theology of the body. Imagine, if you will, I know this is a stretch, but imagine that this is the most beautiful painting you have ever seen. What is it a painting of? It is a painting of Adam and Eve, just as we were created. Do I hear some oohs? Do I hear some ahs? Thank you very much. And it is the most beautiful painting we can possibly imagine because we are the crown of God's creation. And in the beginning, he made us naked without shame. Here is the tragedy of the original sin. Here is what has happened to our vision of the bodies of male and female because of original sin. This beautiful, wonderful, glorious painting has become terribly distorted by lust. What is lust? Lust, if you look at your study guide at the second bullet point, is sexual desire lacking God's love. Lust is love's counterfeit. Now, we recognize in our hearts that lust is not appropriate. And in a lustful world, we tend to think that the solution to this dilemma, and this is the classic religious blunder, we look at this and we do this. Body bad, sex evil, tainted, dirty, going to hell. In the early 1950s, there were two very important historical figures who said we mustn't throw this away. One man was named Hugh Hefner. And he pulled this out of the trash and he said, hey folks, you shouldn't throw this away. Was he right? Yes, he was right. So far, so good. Where was he wrong? He left it just like this and started shoving it in our faces saying, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. That is the sexual revolution of the 20th century. More aptly, I would call it the pornographic revolution. Another prominent figure of the 20th century, at the very same time, early 1950s, a young Polish priest named Karol Wojtyla, who would later become Pope John Paul II, also pulled this out of the trash and said, you shouldn't throw this away. But he did much more than Hugh Hefner did. He said, let me show you what you just threw away. And by reflecting deeply on the word of God, on the words of Jesus about the beginning, started unfolding for us, uncrumpling, if you will, the original, beautiful, wonderful plan of God. And this is what the theology of the body teaches us. This is what the theology of the body reveals for us. Christ came into the world not to say, don't look at that, that's bad, tainted, dirty, evil, your body's all twisted and distorted and just live a spiritual life. No, Christ came into the world to redeem our bodies. Christ came into the world to redeem us, male and female. This is good news. Let's take a look. In order to understand how good the good news is, 
we have to understand a little more how bad the bad news is. 1A, man is ashamed of his body because of lust. In fact, he is ashamed not so much of his body as precisely of lust. Here the Pope corrects himself even. Our body is not shameful. Lust is what is shameful. Never do we blame the body. We blame rather the distortion of our heart, the lustful look. That's the problem. Why do we cover our bodies? A lot of people think we cover our bodies because our bodies are bad. Uh -uh -uh. That's a heresy. Our bodies aren't bad. We cover our bodies in a fallen world precisely because they're so good. And we feel, or at least should feel, an instinctive need to protect the goodness of our bodies from the degradation of lust. Andrew, could you please come back up here and uh, demonstrate for us nakedness without shame? <laughs> you may sit down. Thank you very much. This is the proper response. Okay, the first time I brought him up here, you all laughed. Okay, that wasn't the proper response. But now the laughter is appropriate. Why? Because we know in a fallen world that to expose the body to, to a public audience, what's going to happen? We're, there's a danger that we would not be able to see him properly, that we would not honor the true mystery inscribed in his body. Does the church veil things that are evil? The church veils things that are holy, 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 holy. Our bodies are not evil. They're holy. 1B, shame is not only something negative, the Pope says. Shame also has a positive function as a natural form of self-defense for the person against the danger of being pushed into the position of an object for sexual use. We are never, ever meant to be treated as objects for somebody else's pleasure. And we know that intuitively. That's why we cover the body in a fallen world. 1D, the heart has become a battlefield between love and lust. The more lust dominates our hearts, the less we experience the spousal meaning of the body. What is that spousal meaning of the body? It's that call to love in the image of God that is chiseled right in our sexuality. A man's body doesn't make sense by itself. A woman's body doesn't make sense by itself. Seen in light of each other, if we have the eyes to see, we discover a great mystery. But this is precisely the problem. At the dawn of the original sin, we all went blind. But what's the good news of the gospel? Christ came proclaiming sight for the blind. So I ask you all, I don't want to see a show of hands, you just ask yourself, do you want to see? We should all cry out like that blind man in the gospel, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I want to see. We're beautiful. We're far more beautiful than we ever imagined. Far more beautiful than Hugh Hefner will ever comprehend so long as he remains bound by pornography. You are greater than you realized. That's what we're unfolding here, our greatness.